thought it might be worth just starting out talking about why you might want to visualise in in vivo. And I don't want to talk at length about this because I assume by the fact that you have enrolled today, it suggests you're a visual person and therefore you're interested in visualising your data and coding. Uh, but I think it's worthwhile to just put today's content in context. I find visualisations are a great technique for me personally to familiarise myself with a data set. And I think that's particularly the case as I'm often working with other people's data. So that means I haven't been involved in the actual data collection. And visualisations are just a nice quick way for me to get up to speed with a project. They're also really helpful for discovering insights and patterns. Sometimes when you look at just your data, it's difficult to see the wood for the trees. And viewing something visually actually can often kick up other ideas uh, that you just hadn't thought of when you first looked at the data. They certainly suit particular learning styles. As I said earlier, I'm quite a visual learner, so they very much suit the way that I work. And just those last two bullet points, uh, they are obviously an incredibly helpful way of presenting research findings to either your team or the wider research community. They say a picture paints a thousand words, and that's really helpful when you are in fact dealing with thousands of words, as is often the case with qualitative projects. Now, we're about to jump across to Envivo, so you can be thinking towards that uh, if you haven't launched the software yet. I suspect that for pretty much everything I present today is going to be the same question asked, which is, can I export that? So, I thought it best to address it right at the beginning. The answer is yes. So, for anything I cover over the next two hours, all you need to do is right-click and it will present you with a range of export options. Now, there are further details uh, at the back of the training notes uh, that I sent, um, but I will be actually showing you some examples as well as we go through today. Now, while it might be helpful to know that you can export visualisations for presentation purposes, it's also worth pointing out that not all of the visualisations can actually be saved. So there are exceptions to that. So for example, the maps that we're covering front up, they can be saved. But other visualisations such as word clouds and word trees can't. So a really nice workaround for that is that you can export them out. And because Envivo will allow the import of images, you can then import them back into your project in an image format. Alternatively, you could actually just copy and paste it into a memo within your project, and that has the advantage that you can write some reflections in it as well. So keep that in mind for everything we do this morning. Yes, you can export it, and you do that just simply via a right click. Well, let's get cracking with it. So I will just jump across to Envivo, and uh, I'm hoping that all of you have also uh, got this open ready to go. Now, Jonathan has just asked if I sent a trial project out for you to open up. No, I didn't. So I mentioned in the email that I sent a couple days ago that uh, all you would need is access to the sample project. So there's no special project for today, but you will need access to the sample project. Given that you are all on Envivo 11, that should be a piece of cake because there is a sample project button here. So, on that note, let's click on that. It does sometimes take a little while to uh, open up, so we'll just give that a chance to get there. And of course we get the quick start step, so just uh, close that down for me and we should be ready to go. Now, it might be helpful to know how many of you are sitting there uh, following along with me, so let's use that raise your hand button. 
So on that control panel, look for the little hand, click on it for me if you are sitting there following along live with the presentation. I'll give everyone a moment to do that. There's a fair few of you by the looks of it. Today is a little bit easier to follow along with, uh, simply because the content uh, doesn't sort of build sequentially. So we'll actually be showing you something and then showing you something completely different after that. So just a note about that, as we go through, if you get a little bit behind or lost on one particular visualisation, don't panic at all. As soon as I move on to the next topic, you'll be able to jump straight back in. So it doesn't sort of have a knock-on effect today. Every topic within uh, the session is sort of mutually exclusive, if that makes sense. Uh, the other caveat I would say for those of you following along, this is the type of session where I tend to lose people's attention quite a lot and it's simply because people get really excited uh, with these visualisations and they start changing the colour and moving the shapes around and trying to turn them upside down and all sorts of things like that. So you know, do feel free to play around as we go through but if you could keep uh, half an ear open to what I'm saying that would be really helpful. Okay, thanks for that folks. Looks like we've got about two thirds of you following along. Well, for those of you that are following with me, uh, down on the navigation view on the left hand side, there is a button for maps and I would like you to click on that. So we'll start out with the three maps that come with NVivo 11, and these are new for NVivo 11. Maps replace something called the modeler uh, that was available in earlier versions of the software. So the three maps that we'll be covering this morning, we'll do mind maps, followed by project maps, and then concept maps. Now mind maps we did do very briefly in uh, one or two of the other sessions but I want to spend a little bit more time on them today than we have done previously. Mind maps are for brainstorming. So a mind map reflects what you think about a single topic and it can help you explore your expectations or initial theories. And it, they're also really helpful for developing a possible node structure. Unlike the other maps I'll show you today, mind maps can actually be made at any stage of the process. So you could actually potentially make a mind map the very first thing you do in an NVivo project because you don't need to have any data or coding. You can just get cracking with them straight away. Now we'll make a mind map and uh, the way to do that is to right click your mouse in the white space, the list view. You can see the three maps that we're covering are listed here and I'll get you to choose new mind map. Now I'm pretty sure when we did this previously we did one on NVivo tips. Uh, I'm going to keep it a little bit simpler today because I'm going to be asking you guys for some ideas for this map. So um, I actually teach mind mapping as a separate workshop and uh, the example I usually get my classes to do is happiness. So you are welcome by the way folks if you're following along yourselves feel free to generate a mind map for your own research rather than using this example. So just type in happiness, click on OK. And we also need to enter that particular name into the central idea that's been generated. So just typing either happiness or the topic of your choice in there. Now before everyone gets too distracted with making their own map, can I get you to take a, a minute, no more, to type into the question panel something that makes you happy? So I'm going to actually pull ideas from you guys here. So 60 seconds in as few words as possible, something that makes you happy, send me a message. And once we've got a few ideas, we are going to put them into this map. Oh, I'm liking the look of some of the things that are coming through.
Okay, I am mentally organising these in my head as they come through. Okay, wonderful. That's probably enough ideas, folks. Thanks to those that have uh, sent your messages through. Let's now get you typing, entering these into your map. So just make sure that you are on that central idea there for uh, happiness and just press enter on your keyboard. And that uh, pops you off uh, to a little subtopic. And just uh, organising some of the ideas that came through, I'm probably not surprised to see that animals were quite popular given the group that are attending. Uh, so let's have a sub idea here for pets and just press enter to pop that in. And uh, then pressing enter again and that will give you another subtopic. So family were also uh, a popular theme there. So family can be our next one. Pressing enter and then enter again. And there was also, um, I was very impressed to see some ideas around achievement. So um, progress in my research and achieving a difficult task. So let's actually put achievement in as one. Well. 